Hi everyone, it's Dutch Reefer here, and welcome to a new episode of Reef Keeping 101. Today's video will be about keeping a Koyi parrotfish in your tank, be it a reef tank or a um, fish only with live rock tank, since both are possible with this, uh, this parrotfish. There are, however, some uh, things you need to, uh, to keep in mind when you uh, want to buy one of these fish. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be telling you some facts and figures about this fish today in this video. So in general, parrotfish are very beautiful. They, are color they have very beautiful colors, pastel colored mainly. And you can see them swimming right here at the moment, by the way. So keep that fish in mind. So parrotfish are very beautiful uh, but they're also um, um, they have a beak that they use to uh, to eat rocks so keeping that in mind these fish are uh, quite uh, uh, quite the wreckers inside a uh, inside the ocean so actually they munch on rocks and thereby creating coral sand for example so in general, these fish are not very uh, safe to keep in a reef tank. There's one. So the only exception is the uh, the koi parrotfish that you can see in my tank as well, which is deemed reef safe, ish. So let's uh, let's go through this uh, through this beautiful fish. First of all, uh, it's a, a very uh, beautifully colored fish, like I mentioned before. So um, a lot of people might mistake it for a for a ras, since these are also uh, very beautifully colored. However, it has some uh, very distinct features that uh, make it look quite different from a uh, from a ras. First of all, as I mentioned before, the the beak that it has. Uh, so it has a very sharp uh, beak that it sharpens by uh, by uh, munching on on rocks and dead coral mostly um, and uh, yeah that's exactly what you uh, want to keep into account so it's it's perfectly fine that they eat rocks of course if you have enough if you have plenty um, it also likes to to eat on the ceramic uh, wall of the t of this tank so in the back wall the back pane that you can see right here it will actively chew on it you can actually hear them chewing on it as well so you will hear some ticking noises um, because they are uh, yeah, actually uh, trying to bite small pieces uh, off of it. This is natural behavior, so nothing to worry about. However, it's something you need to keep in mind. Um, what they will also do is uh, try to, uh, to eat your dead corals, because of course dead corals are considered uh, rock by this fish. Um, the difficulty there is that even a coral that is in pretty bad shape might be mistaken for a dead coral by this fish. So if your corals are in bad shape, so for example this Stylophora right here, then there is a good chance that uh, it will start munching on this coral as well. And if it touches the part of the coral which is in pretty bad shape, then of course that will only accelerate the death of the coral in question. Um, so in general, if your corals are in, on, in low health or not doing very well, it might be a good idea to uh, remove the coral from the tank when you have one of these uh, beautiful uh, parrotfish, koi parrotfish in your, uh, in your reef tank. Other than that, they are uh, super nice to keep. They are very friendly towards other fish. They rarely show any aggressive moves to other fish. Uh, they are peaceful, they like to be alone, so you don't need to buy more than one. Uh, they have very uh, distinctive behavior, they're looking around the reef all day long, uh, looking for, for algae, since that is their main diet. Uh, other than chewing rocks, they also uh, can appreciate green food. Um, so when, if you have one of these fish, be sure to uh, to supplement its uh, meaty diet with uh, with algae depending of course on how much algae there is in your tank <coughs> already 
So I'm, I'm actually feeding him uh, some of the uh, macro algae that I have in my uh, in my sump, which is a Colerpa taxifolia, uh, which is uh, devoured by this uh, this fish. Uh, so that's uh, yeah, it uh, it can appreciate some green food as well. Of course, it also likes the uh, the frozen foods that I throw at it, um, since that's uh, yeah, it's also on its its menu. This fish is a bit of an uh, not a specialist feeder, it likes most things you uh, throw at it. So, so various people have various opinions about the minimum amount of liters or gallons that your tank should be to house one of these fish. The minimum is about 800 liters, so I'd say 200 gallons. And some people say you need at least a 1500 liter tank it's about 400 gallons. Me, I have a 1200 liter tank, about 1100 in the display, which is about 320G, uh, which uh, I think is sufficient for this fish. It can grow a little larger, but I don't expect it to uh, to become twice as large. So for now, this, uh, this tank size is uh, perfectly adequate uh, for keeping one of these fish. Uh, but keep in mind that they like to uh, scour around the reef all day. So if you put them in, put these fish into a very small tank, they will get bored and stressed uh, rather easily. Sometimes you can see it looking at the glass, at the pe glass pane towards you. Um, it's actually seeing itself in its reflection and it's uh, acting uh, weird to its own uh, image in the mirror, you might say. So that's a funny thing to watch, as you can see right now. It does that a lot. Birdfish have a, a very distinct shape. Um, as I mentioned before, they kind of look like wrasse, but they're uh, very different. One of the main differences is that their skeletal structure is also very different. So the fish is actually very uh, broad, thick, as you can see. So normal fish are about this uh, thin, but this one is more like this. And that also makes it very easy to uh, overlook the fact that it's uh, not feeding very well. Uh, so you have to look at the thickness behind the gills to see if it's uh, actually in good shape or if it's uh, starving. When I got mine, um, it, was, uh, it looked healthy. But with some advice I got from some fellow reefers, uh, they pointed to the fact that it was actually quite thin behind the gills. Uh, so I really needed to feed him some extra, a bit extra to get him up to uh, the decent uh, weight again, or at least decent size again, because I don't weigh my fish, obviously. Um, so all in all, I think these are uh, beautiful fish to keep. It's the only parrot fish that I know of that you can keep in a reef tank with live corals. It's, um, it's behaving really well. So I've had it for about half a year now. I haven't seen it eating at uh, corals other than just rocks and uh, corals that are in very bad shape. It can be mistaken for uh, plain rocks. Um, a last thing of warning I want to give you before buying these fish is make sure that your cables that are inside the water are uh, are decent enough so if you look example at these pumps that are in here once some algae starts to grow on it your parrot fish will definitely start munching at the cables as well so make sure that your uh, that you check your cables regularly uh, you keep them a bit clean so that it doesn't accidentally try to bite them in half and then electrocuting the fish and possibly more in your tank which is of course uh, something very bad if that would happen if that were to happen so please keep in mind that these are uh, real destruction fish they will munch at your rocks they will try to uh, to eat stuff Luckily, they uh, don't have a taste for uh, for LPS 
or all our uh, corals. So it's just the, uh, the, the rocks and the dead corals. So I hope you, uh, you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this fish. Uh, I'm sure uh, I, I sure do. So I'm very happy that I got this fish. I, I didn't know if I should buy it or not, but uh, I pulled the trigger and I'm uh, very happy that I did. It's a beautiful addition to, uh, to my reef tank. And I'll definitely uh, keep it uh, in here for the next, uh, no, for the next period of time, because I'm actually very happy with uh, the way it does. So thanks for, uh, for watching. Um, I'll uh, see you in the next video. So for now, have a great week and uh, stay safe out there. Bye-bye.